What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinists as we continue our live coverage of Manufacturing Technology Series West here in Anaheim, California. And we had to drop in on some local legends. They get manufactured right around here. Track Machine Tools with my friend, Track and Pat. How you doing, Ian? Thank you very much for having us by. Always good to see you. Now this must be an easy show for you guys because you're just down the road. Yeah, we almost could have just put the stuff on a trailer and just pulled it here, right? Because it was pretty easy to do. Although, you know, most of our products now are actually made in Henderson, Nevada. So we did have to cart in three of the four machines for this show. But some of them are just made down the road. That's absolutely right. You now, know. you guys actually have some. I took a little look around the booth. You actually have a couple of premieres and newer things that people may not have seen from Track Machine Tools here. Why don't we start here with something that might be a little more familiar? Tell me about this machine here. So this is the Prototrack 1630 lathe, right? It's the smallest of our series of lathes now. And we go all the way up to a 30 by 200 lathe now. Oh, wow. It or not, which is made in Henderson, of course. But, um, but this is the smallest one. It's probably the most popular because it does just about everything you need to do. It fits in that envelope, right? So you still have full manual capability and yet you have full CNC capability. And of course, with the Prototrack system, anybody can run it. If you're a machinist and can speak English, you can run this thing, right? And that's essentially the same version of the control that I'm used to, the RMX, just that's the RLX, which is the turning version. It's the lathe version, yep. The L is a real secret, the L's for lathe. Fair enough. <laughs> you know? And, uh, and like I said, you know, the other great part is if you want to run this thing from CAD or CAM or from DXF files, it'll run all the above. So you really have the best of all worlds by being able to do all of that at the same time with just one machine. Because you know, on, my, on another lathe, you can't just go do a little bit and then run a CAM program two seconds later and oh, it didn't part that off right. Well, I can just part it off here. Here, it's, you have full flexibility with anything you want totally. to do. At any time. And you know, don't forget, it's still got the tracking version too. So that means in the middle of running at any time, if you're a little unsure of yourself, you can stop, hit tracking, dial it through it manually. If you don't like it, back it back out, see what you did wrong. And then when you got it proofed out, make as many parts as you need to. I didn't know how much I liked that feature until I started running it. Cause yeah. you think, ah, oh, you're not gonna use that. And then you get in one sketchy area and you go, I don't know what I did before this, when you can just step it through a little bit at a time without, you know, hitting the two buttons back and forth. Yeah, it spoils you and it saves your fingers and your thumbs a little bit too. So I use them enough good. on machines, save them a little bit. Now, of course, I see one that looks like something I'm a little more familiar with over here. Tell me about this bad boy. So obviously the DPM is our workhorse, right? I mean, ever since, ever since back in the days when everybody had an email with some sort of a control on it, we came up with the idea of doing something different, right? So we came out with a bed mill, which was actually this size. This is our number three machine. And at the time we came out with it, people are just like, oh my God, somebody's got a different way of thinking, something that's a little more rigid, give you some capability. But yet, like a bridge port or any other knee mill, you still got a manual quill, you can use it as a manual machine, but you can program two axis, two and a half axis, three axis, or even run it with an indexer if you need to. So this thing can do full surfacing if you wanted to, or you can pop two holes in a plate if you wanted to. Absolutely. And again, how do you want to program? At the control from DXF, from Parasolid, from Mastercam, from any cam features, you know, you really got the best of all worlds. And this is the fourth generation control on this machine now. Oh, that's so the they, brand new one. Right, so it's, you know, it actually started in like 1997. Um, and came all the way to where we are now. So it's a fourth control and it just keeps getting better. And I know we can't talk about some of the companies that are buying these, but it's fascinating that not only is this still a very hot mover, a lot of companies love these, even the high-end tech companies are using these in their operations. That's absolutely right, you know, and you know, I, I'm sure you know a lot of the cool tech companies that are up here a little north of us, and I've been in just about all of them. I got to see everything from how they make cars to how they make medical devices to everything else. And you know, people think that these are toys of some sort, they really don't understand the industry because these things are in every single prototype shop there is. I saw these in Aerospace Alley down in Connecticut making parts for F-16s, well, I mean, all, all kinds of military equipment that I didn't know what it was, yeah. but I'm guessing, and it was all done on these machines. It's really cool. It's, it's neat to know that you got stuff in outer space that was made on a prototrack. Right in our backyard. Now this one over here, this is a personal favorite, so I'm sorry if I'm gonna gush about this one a bit. Yeah, the VNC2. Here you got a little bit of experience, right? You know, uh, and, and by the way, thank you because ever since you've been doing videos with this one in your shop, it's been boosting our sales, so that's a good thing, you know? It's been fantastic. I mean, if you, anybody who's seen it, the way we use it, we use this predominantly as a second op, but the other thing we found a really good use for it for is running stuff when the other mills are busy. So we do a lot of stuff that it fits in one vise. Why would I set that up on my mill that has a 60 inch table when I can do it here? Short travels, quick cycles, it just makes more sense. We've actually shifted a lot of work to this that we hadn't anticipated for. 
Yeah, I think, you know, when this thing was originally uh, invented, it was made to be a secondary app machine only. That's why it's small. You can fit it down an aisle. You can move it with a pallet jack. But what happened is we realized all of our customers were using it as a full three access machine to do work everywhere from in their garage into a big shop. And so it's like, hey, let's reinvent this. Let's put that RX control on it, add all the power and still keep all the versatility. And it's just boomed ever since. 100%. And I mean, a lot of people I feel like maybe look at it and they go, oh, it's so small. It's like a desktop mill. No, no, no. We do 4140 in this. We do 303. We do 304. Pretty much anything will run in another machine. Even though it's got a BT30 spindle, it still has the power for it. It'll oh, yeah, drive taps. It does everything you want it to do. Yeah, with the 10,000 RPM, you can get it spinning fast enough that you can make up for the fact that it's a little light duty. Like we tell people, take lighter cuts, but do them a lot faster, and you'll still get the job done pretty quick and adequate. And that's the thing. We've shifted a couple of our programs over to running on other machines to use exactly that strategy. Not only does it not take more time, sometimes it's actually faster. Yeah, and you're not tying up that machine that could be doing something way more profitable. Well, way bigger, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the footprint. The other thing we've done for this, which I don't know if you guys have seen, is this basically runs off a welding plug. Mm -hmm. You do not need a transformer for this machine. That's right. So I went and put a whole bunch of welding plugs around my, machi er, around my machine shop. Since you can move it with a pallet jack, today I want it over here. Tomorrow, I want it over there. Mm -hmm. Literally a pallet jack, we take it over, plug it in, and it's ready to go. Yep, absolutely it's right. Take easy. the rock out of it if the floor's not even, and you're cutting. That's yeah. it, No, you don't need riggers, you don't need a forklift, nothing. Right, yeah, it's pretty simple. And this one over here is one I have not seen before. Tell me so, a little bit about this. So this is the premiere for this machine. So this is part of our Cinumeric product line, right? Okay. And so, so far, the only thing you've seen in any of the times you've interviewed us is our two-axis version yes. of the lathe. So this is our first lathe with a live Y-axis. Oh, wow. Okay. So this gives you all the versatility, same size, it's an 8x20 lathe, but now I have the ability to do all the milling and machining that I could do in any other Y-axis machine. Still has the Cinumeric, so I can program some pretty high-tech stuff, even at the control. But then, of course, you can run it again from G-Code or whatever else you want to run for your programming device. So this is really new, and we've got a few more things on the horizon that are going to be out early next year. You know, we're going to have this with a sub spindle. Oh, nice. Okay, so that's the next thing. We have one in the shop now that we're getting tuned up and ready to go. So that's going to be one of the next things. Yeah. And, of course, you know, as you saw the last time we were together, we have the trunnion now in the mill. So we got five axes. We have three plus two. We have full fourth axis. So we are evolving. Uh, also, next year sometime, we're going to have the two-axis and the Y-axis version of this in a larger size. Oh, sweet. So that's coming next because, like everything else we make, people get real lucky. They're using it. They're really happy, and they're like, I need a bigger one. So we're working on that next, right? So we're, we're evolving almost faster than we can keep up. But so far, it's been a really, really fun ride to go along with this thing. The one thing I really like about track is that you guys could have started with the, you know, the knee mills and the straight turning lathes and said, this is what we do, that's it. Every time I visit you guys, there's something new and it's usually based on user feedback. Mm -hmm. So you're literally listening to the people running these saying, what do you guys need? And then that goes into the next generation. It's a very quick feedback loop, it feels like. Yeah, I'm gonna make this really general when I explain this, but we basically have a room in engineering that's a big whiteboard, and every idea that comes in from a customer, a salesman, whatever, an end user, goes on that whiteboard, and then they sit down and go, okay, what can we work on that makes sense next? And that's where all the ideas come from and eventually evolve into being the machines that we sell. And they're doing very, very well. We're thrilled with ours. I'm excited to see what you guys come out with next. I'm definitely interested in the Sunamera controller. The one question I have about the Trenion version, how many people do you see programming, or with this machine as well, with that Sunameric One controller versus a CAM system? Because I know for you know the track system, it's maybe 70, 30, 50, 50. What are you seeing for this generation? Actually, it's funny. On the Lays, you'll find it's a larger percentage of people that are programming right at the control because it's so simple and powerful. Right. So they'll tell you that probably it's more 50, 50. Um, on the lathes as opposed to the milling machines. But part of that is because even, even this is still pretty simple compared to full five axis stuff, right. right? So then you're gonna have to be, there are guys that are using the uh, trunnions and doing three plus two and they're programming at the control, right. which is about the limit of my capability, by the way. You know, I've never really gotten into the CAD and CAM stuff. It's not my job. I've never done you know? full five axis, so. Yeah, you haven't so good, then I don't feel so bad. But, um, but 
the rest of that stuff, you know, that you can do, a lot of it's done at the controls, you right. know? And then the great part I say, the, the versatility and the reason the Sun Merrick fits into the Prototrack line is it's just as easy as a Prototrack. And sometimes it's even easier because it prompts you through everything and tells you what to do and then it shows you illustrations of what you're trying to do. So it's easy to follow. So there's a lot of shops out there that don't use CAD, don't use CAM. You know, and they're running these things all day long. So the learning curve is so much lower. You can put this on the floor and be making chips the next day, even if you don't really know how to program CAM. Correct. And you know what we say, you're not going to hurt our feelings if you tell us, hey, we run everything from whatever our CAM device is. That's OK. As long as you're buying our product and you're getting what you want out of it, we're OK with that. You have the but don't option. forget. Sometimes you only got to poke two holes in a plate, right? And you don't need to have a CAM system for that, right? Makes so sense. Whatever works best for you works for us. And if people want to find out more about Track Machine Tools and everything coming up next, where can they go? Well, I think, you know, we've got open houses all around the country, all time, all year round. So I would say check our website first, you know, which is trackmt.com, right? And, uh, you know, our, our actual company name is Southwestern Industries. So I, I like people to know that when they click into that, they're going to end up there. But it's the same company, right? And that's usually the best way to see what's coming up, what's going on, where are we doing. There you get information on all the machines. You can find who your local distributor or direct sales guy is. So that way you kind of got all of it in a nutshell in one place. Right. And of course, they can come see you live here at Manufacturing Technology Series West for the next couple of days. If you guys are in the area, make sure you stop by, see Tracking Pat, and check these out for yourself. Pat, thank you very much for having us. Always a pleasure, you know, and I'm always here for you guys, and I'm always here as long as I have to be until my feet no longer hurt. And if you need help, he's the guy to ask, because he knows it all. Appreciate and make it. sure you guys stay tuned as we continue our live coverage of Manufacturing Technology Series West here in Anaheim, California. Thank you very much for watching.